Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webcast. My name is Michael Tronto, and I'm a strategic account specialist at Wikisoft. I'm also joined on today's webcast with Jim Patterson, who leads in a business development role. Today, we will focus on next-gen project portfolio management. What's the future of PPM? After the webinar, you will receive an email with a copy of the recording and the slide deck so you can review. The line will not be open for questions, but you can type in your questions via the chat feature. So if you want to know more about Wikisoft and who we are today, we are a Microsoft joint venture that was founded in 2002. We provide consulting, business process outsourcing, managed services, and global support for staffing. We are a triple gold certified Microsoft partner. Less than 1% of partners ever have that designation. We're certified in project portfolio management, collaboration and content, and cloud productivity. From a project and portfolio management standpoint, we have a deep expertise in project online and project server. So we have a lot of experience helping organizations maximize their efficiency and technological advantage. We have a footprint all over North America and internationally. I will now hand off the webcast to Jim Patterson. Jim. All right, terrific. Thank you, Mike. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today and carving out some of your valuable time for us. Uh, my name is Jim Patterson with Wikisoft, and today we're going to talk about next-gen project and portfolio management, why you can't afford to miss the wave. What's driving a lot of this discussion on next-gen is really the rise of technology today. Um, the, the market landscape has changed dramatically over the last couple decades, and the pace of change is increasing ever faster. What were tra traditionally brick-and-mortar type of businesses are rapidly becoming or have become uh, digital or technological software-driven companies. We look at the old uh, uh, department stores that have been supplanted by the online shopping of the Amazons of the world. The lines we used to wait in at Blockbuster Video has been replaced by streaming services like Netflix, et cetera, Hulu. Even transportation, things like taxi cabs have been supplanted and getting a, a, a lot of competition and uh, 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 diversity from Uber and Lyft and the, and the other likes of app-driven type of rideshare type of services. Even when we go to our fast food restaurants and order our soft drinks, um, the uh, uh, the experience is more technology and software driven these days. So what does this mean? It really means changes across all aspects of an organization. If we look at the executives, they have to strategically think about new ways of going to market and taking advantage of opportunities that this technology represents and how do we stay competitive and ahead of our competitors in the marketplace. The PMOs have an uh, um, increasing diversity of project types, including more and more different methodologies and approaches, whether they be traditional types of infrastructure projects, software development projects, maybe new product development. And then the software development groups, they really need to be agile and be responsive, and they have to use tools that are conducive or designed to help them optimize that and get to market quicker, deliver incrementally, and actually become more effective overall. And then ultimately, as we put these technology solutions out there and our customer experiences are uh, predicated on them, uh, our abilities to support those because they become a lifeblood or a mainstream of our business becomes ever, ever more paramount. So the idea is that no one is, uh, goes uh, unaffected throughout the different roles in an organization. Ultimately, these changes are happening because change is the new norm. In the past, we had the ability to plan and build strategies and build longer-term plans and execute on projects in a traditional maybe waterfall or phased gate approach. Um, that is increasingly not such the case. Oftentimes, by the time we build uh, and uh, uh, accumulate requirements and put a specification together, if it takes months or years to deliver on those types of projects, by the time we reach the end line, the marketplace and the criteria and the objectives uh, may have changed dramatically. I mean, we may end up not delivering what is needed in the marketplace or to our customer base. So ultimately, we have an unpredictable business, business environment. Constant change is really the norm, and we have to be able to respond to that in a very nimble fashion. So from a PMO perspective, what are some of the lessons learned? You know, when PMOs really started to become in vogue a couple of, years, a couple of decades ago, uh, it was really about process. And really, it was uh, how do we put enough process in place 
and uh, enough standards and, 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 and policies in place such that we can get repeatable and consistent processes and outcomes from our projects. And that was some of the driver to get everybody rowing in the same direction. But nowadays, just having a process that gets everybody working in concert just isn't enough. It's really about delivering value to the organization. Hence, delivering just the project isn't enough. It doesn't matter that we deliver something. We have to deliver the right things, and we have to deliver something that actually brings value to the organization. So the idea of delivering isn't enough either all the time. We have to work on the right things and provide value. Also, resource capacity always matters. A lot of us work in organizations where the, the, the mantra is, uh, we just get it done. And the idea is if we don't factor in seriously the resource capacity constraints that we have in an organization, uh, there is no free lunch. We're either not going to deliver, we're not going to deliver certain pieces, we're not going to deliver things in a quality fashion. And the idea is that we really have to factor that into the mix in all cases. Also, dependencies are part of your constraints. Uh, today, with complex systems and infrastructures, the hardware and software components of things are sometimes a, a good example of that. Uh, new hardware platforms that maybe requires new, uh, new OSs or new software to run on those things. One can't happen or be delivered to the marketplace without the other, meaning at some point they're going to have to interact and uh, work in concert to deliver something to the end customer uh, in a successful fashion. Also, troubled projects require immediate attention is another lesson learned. Uh, the analogy there is really like a uh, misbehaving child. The longer you let that scenario go, the worse it's going to get and the harder it's going to be to rectify. And if we let it go too long, it may reach the point of no return. The idea is we need early warning and analysis so that we can actually take action at a time when we can still have some impact on the situation. Also, we need to speak the language of the business. The PMO and the project management organizations need to be speaking the same language and have the same goals and objectives and aligned with the same strategies. If we're delivering a lot of cool stuff and we're delivering it successfully, but it's not what the business needs or what the business wants or what the business is articulating as its mission, vision, or strategy, then why are we doing it? The idea more and more, it's becoming more and more important with scarce resources and funding to be able to deliver the right things all the time. And software alone isn't enough. We have to actually have the intersection of people, processes, and technology to successfully deliver projects and successfully apply the right resources to these efforts as we go through the different organizations. So as we see uh, our analysis uh, in doing this on a daily basis with a lot of different industries, and we follow the analysts, the Gartners and the Foresters and others of the world and the thought leaders in this space. What are some of the trends that are coming for the next decade? Well, one is the move to the cloud, the concept of a digital PMO. Uh, the, the train has left the station and it's moving fast and it's bringing with it all kinds of capabilities and accessibility to capabilities to organizations of all size because infrastructure is not something that is required. The rise of Agile, because of the technological uh, 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 pace and the need for developing software and other technologies, people are increasingly using agile methodologies and different variations of the theme to deliver on those products and software uh, efforts. Um, and oftentimes that really lends itself to more new product development. As the pace of cha uh, change increases, uh, new products, new models, new technologies, just to stay ahead of the curve and leverage the advances in the general technology sector. Uh, means that we have more and more rapid and more frequent NPD or new product development projects in the mix. Also connected systems. Um, you know, there was a time when the analysts thought that we were moving down the road of big monolithic systems that would handle all kinds of work in all aspects of a business, uh, a la ERP type of systems. And really the trend now and the current thinking by the analyst community is it really is going to be a landscape of best of breed systems. Best of breed systems that are targeted for the right types of things, whether it be agile development, whether it be new product development, whether it be project portfolio management, just to talk about the genre of tools that we're here to talk about today. Today, they need to be in place so that we can get the best value and the best operation for the organization, but have them work in concert instead of as standalone silos of information. And then visualizing data, reporting and business intelligence and analytics have become so advanced uh, and have become more accessible to the masses without having usually expensive systems and data warehouses put in place. The ability to have visualization of data that has some analysis already baked into it so that we don't have to look at eye charts and figure out what the data means. And then ultimately, as we see for things that are out there like, uh, like Cortana, like Siri, 
you know, like Alexa, the AI and predictive analysis uh, ana analytics is really here today, even though it's in its early stages, and it's going to have applications in the project management and portfolio management realm very shortly. So let's talk about digital PMOs and what that means. If we look at uh, PMO capability must, you know, it's become a complex landscape of features and functionality, and it really really needs to be something that empowers human creativity and taps in really what the real power of our organizations are. Not our systems, but really the creativity and the innovation and the intelligence uh, of our uh, resources and our people within our organization. If we look at the lighter colored blocks in this stack over here, those are the things we traditionally thought about a PPM system having, the resource management, portfolio management, schedule and task management, financial management, et cetera. But if we look at the darker blocks, this is something that to be competitive and be relevant in today's landscape, we really have to have these pieces in place. We have to have agility, not only just the small a business agility overall, but being able to have agile or big, ad, big A agile types of processes to get things out the door incrementally and faster and more responsive to the marketplace. Just overall work management, we have to factor in all the work that's on our resources plate to figure out what our true bandwidth is and what we can actually deliver based upon our capacities within organizations. And the integration has to happen between different work types, different solutions, and different constituencies within our organizations and our external partners. And then simplicity. As these back-end infrastructures in the cloud provide capabilities that are more complex, more advanced, and just more sophisticated, that does not mean that we actually have to get more complex in the user experience. We have to provide a user experience that's more simple so that people can be uh, participatory on an effective fashion and not be intimidated by the solutions that they work with. And just automation and getting the business process working together so that we uh, eliminate inefficiencies and disconnects within our organizations and with our uh, ultimate end customers. So having a digital PMO, something that's really based on cloud-based technology, and it's really all part of an overall digital transformation effort that many organizations are looking to today. It's really about providing sufficient agility by having the right tools and capabilities and processes in place to allow them to follow that agile type of approach. Scalability, not only from a uh, capacity perspective from a systems perspective, but also from a level of maturity, meeting people where they're at today and allow them to get on a roadmap to growth, to getting more sophisticated, more mature capabilities as an organization from project and portfolio management. Lower cost of ownership by not having to have infrastructure and server farms of your own in place to maintain and buy, et cetera. There's no real capital outlay that has to happen to get these systems up today. The idea is because it's all cloud-based, you subscribe, you turn it on, and it can work for you. It's also about governance and control, providing solutions that only larger organizations had as, uh, access to years ago now is accessible to the masses. And the idea is that we can take advantage of the momentum that we have in our organizations and not have to wait for infrastructure to get up, for IT to be involved. And the idea is to do all that by having cloud technology. We can actually turn it on and get going and deliver value. Ultimately, we're providing tools and capabilities in the cloud that strengthen collaboration and also provide mobile access from wherever we're at. And one of the cool things about the cloud is we, we're talking about core solutions that are available. And we're going to talk about Project Online today. But the idea here is to have uh, point solutions or apps that can add or provide additional capabilities in areas where you have specific unique needs and having those available in kind of an app store type of format, like much like we have on our mobile devices, is really exciting and allows uh, uh, vendors and partners like Wickersoft to add value to that mix on a very uh, uh, supportable and accessible basis to the customers. Ultimately, these things are all meant to drive competitive advantage uh, in the marketplace to help our organizations take a leadership position. Ultimately, Microsoft is uniquely positioned in the Microsoft Cloud to enjoy all the benefits. The Microsoft Cloud infrastructure is really you know, about creating more personal computing capabilities, uh, having an intelligent cloud platform, and be able to adopt or adapt all of the processes you have in your organization. Ultimately, we're here to talk about today about Microsoft PPM or Project Online, but notice in this diagram, it is just one dimension of a one Microsoft Cloud solution.
as we look at things like Microsoft Azure for storing data and your own solutions in addition to what you're doing with the uh, SaaS-based PPM, Power BI to get business analytics as a natural output of the process, having it tied in with your overall Office 365 experience where you're using email and SharePoint and business productivity tools like Office Word and PowerPoint, lightweight planning tools like Office 365 Planner, agile tools like Visual Studio Team Services, VSTS, so that you can have a software development environment that has work management, but have that tied into your PPM process. And just the business solutions platform like Dynamics 365. An organization can manage all dimensions of what they want to do right from within the Microsoft Cloud platform. It's an exciting, exciting time uh, to be on the Microsoft train. So let's talk about the rise of Agile. Given the technology uh, trends that we talked about in the opening slide, you know, Agile is an increasingly popular business model, especially among technology companies who need to deploy applications quickly and frequently with changes and additions. Um, you know, Agile was something that really started from a consensus basis on the team level. Individual teams that were delivering software really is where it started. But now as it's becoming a more adopted, broad-based approach that organizations and teams are using across the board, managing an agile methodology in concert across an entire organization can be challenging. This is where project, project portfolio management can come in to help harness that and do it on more of a scaled basis across an entire enterprise that rather than just on a team level. So PPM software really suits or complements agile. Um, it allows for better communication, quicker reporting to the higher levels, and transparency within and across teams. So as markets become crowded and competitive and fast paces, the combination of Agile and PPM software will provide a combined synergy that was going to provide a lot of powerful capabilities for the teams as well as reporting up through the rest of the organization. The key is there's some folks that you know, are kind of purists that think the PPM and governance driven approach uh, that we traditionally have is the right way to go. And some folks are saying, no, everything needs to be agile. Our finding right now in the marketplace is that you really need to find the right balance of both. You have to have enough governance from uh, intake and investment allocation and then provide visibility, insight, and uh, alignment and control to understand how our investments are tracking. But as the teams get turned loose and get approved to work on these things, they need to be as agile as possible so they can innovate, we can get quicker time to market and be responsive to changing landscapes out in the market. And this is not a new concept. Uh, back in 2015, Gartner introduced the concept of bimodal IT or just bimodal operation. In this case, mode one is really that traditional PPM approach that we're used to. Um, the, the analogy is a marathon runner, things with longer cycle times in projects, things using more traditional waterfall types approaches to your projects, things that you would do in Microsoft Project. And mode two is really that agile approach that has shorter cycle times with the analogy of a sprinter that are using approaches like agile, scrum, lean, Kanban, all the types of things that are kind of more responsive and more incremental in the way that we deliver uh, on a more iterative basis. And the idea is that they're two separate coherent modes of delivery, and but they should work in concert in ways that make sense for our organization. And there's a place for both of them. In today's world, instead of having separate solutions for all these things, why can't we have it all come together from a portfolio management perspective so that you manage one or more portfolios and then the programs and different uh, release trains that you might have in your organization, but then at the team level, it doesn't matter whether you're managing more traditional projects, more agile projects, or a hybrid of the two, you should be able to manage and track those things visibly and seamlessly in a single solution. In a solution like we're gonna talk about today, uh, Project Online is well suited to be that kind of uh, center of the universe as a hub of portfolio management capabilities. It would be at the top here where you would do all your program management, portfolio management, and all that summary level roll-up of information that you would need, including intake and investment approval as you bring things in from an idea to a request in a business case process. And here it would also house all the financial capacity planning information to understand what we can actually accomplish. But when it comes time to execute these things or build out plans in more detail on how we're actually going to do this, you have choices now with uh, the availability of using native onboard Microsoft project capabilities to do the traditional waterfall scheduling, 
or I'm using tools like Visual Studio or Jira or other tools so that you can actually do the agile approaches and build product backlogs and iterations and sprints and manage things across story and task boards. The idea here is, is that they all feed the same portfolio, even though tactically at the detail level, they may be being executed in different tool sets. Now, the more new product development is really a byproduct of the fact that we have to bring products to market faster and on a more frequent basis than we ever have in the past. And the increasing speed of innovation and change is breeding more and more NPD type of projects, which can include hardware, software, and other components to bring those things to market. And they can involve many dimensions and they can incorporate more and more, not just software development, but other new product areas are incorporating more agile, lean, and other rapid iterative approaches to deliver these things uh, at the end of the day. Traditionally, there's been separate new product development tools in use, but then they end up being their own silo of information. And because new product development is the lifeblood of many organizations, these efforts need to be effective, we need to make sure we're delivering the right things, and they need to be incorporated into an overall holistic project portfolio of the things that we're delivering as far as value to the organization. To that end, the connected systems piece is very, very important. Connected software, you know, as businesses become more global and geographically diverse, they need better stakeholder communications. And for fortunately, up till today, you know, modern PPM software has basically evolved to allow people to access things like documents and data and schedules and reports from multiple, multiple devices across the globe in multiple locations on demand. But connected PPM software also needs to have the ability to have your team members provide updates in real time and be able to stop sending things like email attachments and documents around the globe. We need one source of truth or one connected data source to make that all happen. And that's available here today and getting better in the future. It also needs to support a variety of methodologies and tool sets so that instead of having disconnected spreadsheets and different point solutions that are basically acting independently, they need to work better together so we can get a complete picture of what's going on in the organization at a glance and on demand. So ultimately, some of the things that we deal with in the project and portfolio and just extending to overall work management landscape, we still have a lot of silos of disconnected systems and processes. And the three that we see here are in the center, the traditional project management, things that we managed in a traditional waterfall fashion, things like Microsoft Project. Um, but then application management, where we're doing software development uh, and, and, and other uh, application portfolio management, typically those are now being done in separate solutions off to the side in dedicated agile tools. And then some unstructured work in the service management side of things, things that Microsoft Dynamics and Service Cloud from Salesforce or ServiceNow, that's another source of work that provides a significant workload on a more operational basis. And the idea we have resources in our organizations that oftentimes get assigned work in all these different domains, meaning they're having to go to three, four, or five different solutions and some spreadsheets as well off to the side in order to see all the work that they've been assigned and have different places to go to provide status and updates on their completion and other things that they have to do, let alone having to discern where the priorities are and what's more important than the next when they're coming from different solutions. So the idea is it breeds a scenario where it provides key challenges per role. You know, project managers don't necessarily have a holistic view of everything that's going on, including their dev schedules. Executives have a hard time getting a holistic portfolio and looking at the investments across the board without significant pain and manual mashing up of data from these different solutions. Developers need different tools necessarily for, to do their work effectively, uh, yet still have to provide double entry to kind of feed up the chain what, uh, what information management or leadership is looking for. And support may not necessarily have a clear view into the product roadmaps and what's coming down their pike uh, that they end up having to support at the end of the day. So there's disconnects in, in that whole type of landscape. And when we talk about third parties like Wickersoft, we provide a integration platform called Project Connect in the Microsoft Cloud that actually has Project Online be the center of the universe. 
but fold in on a productized connector basis the different aspects we talked about here today. In the upper left, we're looking at agile tools like Jira Visual Studio version one, looking at the unstructured tools in the lower right like ServiceNow, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, where service requests and incidents and tickets come in. CRM in the upper right where you're looking at uh, where opportunity management, for example, might be the feed in for demand to create our projects and services organizations. And even the financial aspects where um, the, the costs and other aspects of the system uh, of the projects may be housed in your financial system, getting visibility into that and tied to the project information is something that Project Connect can handle as well. This really uh, addresses that connected systems type of approach and it is something that is actually here today. The other piece here is that whole collaboration and communication dimension of all this. If we look at Microsoft Teams, which is really now evolving and eventually is going to, as I hear it, uh, really become the communication mechanism or platform that will replace Skype uh, moving forward. But the idea is to be able to look at the different tool sets within a team uh, forum that you can actually have different things like your project schedules and your software development backlogs and your Power BI reports and maybe some uh, uh, more Kanban style task management and Office 365 Planner and have them all accessible from one uh, environment uh, is something that we'll talk about and actually show today. And this is all part of the fulfillment of the availability of cloud solutions. And the visualizing data, this is really the payback. You know, we put the, all the hard effort into feeding these systems with data and updates and making sure that they're current. So the payback is so that we get this, but oftentimes this is still a very manual or at least semi-manual process for organizations and creating status reports and updates and uh, views sometimes becomes projects in and of themselves when they really should be a, just a natural output of the process. So in visualizing data, you know, what we've seen is that the trending is, is that you know, looking at data dumps and things like spreadsheets, those days are quickly leaving us or have gone. Today, more people expect data to be pre-analyzed and presented in a format that paint a picture for us and do some pre-analysis to draw our eyes to the problem areas or the things that require our attention. And also from the perspective of the business, it gives us data that's easier to interpret on a consistent basis so it can reach the audience and give the right message to people without them having to do a lot of analysis or figuring out from report to report how to interpret it. So as a project manager, we should be able to use data visualization to maximize our impact on the business for our individual projects and just as our overall portfolio of projects as a whole. So what if, and this is stuff that's here today and it's increasingly gaining value and capabilities even more as we go through, what if instead of viewing your data like this in big eye chart data dumps that might often to some folks when they first look at it look like this when you really kind of boil it down because there's just so much to absorb. What if your data could look like this with different dimensions and pre-analysis that give you a complete picture of what things are looking at sorted and filtered and prioritized? What if you could look at trending data, look at your key metrics that you follow to look at the health of your projects and your portfolios, to look at how those things are trending and we're going in a positive or a negative direction? What if you could look at predictive analysis to say, based upon current trends of where we're at so far, within a 95% likelihood of outcome, where, what's that range where we're likely to end up in? So when people ask that question, where are we going to end up from a cost or schedule or resource perspective, we can tell them. Or what if we could share this information instead of having to send out manually created PowerPoints and other documents that are created painstakingly? What if we had automated dashboards that we could actually share with people on a routine and scheduled basis or have people subscribe to get them on a routine basis or when certain thresholds or alerts are crossed? This is a way that we can actually have a more digital experience and keep everybody informed on a more routine basis. We can also manage alerts so that we can establish thresholds. For example, if a certain metric goes beyond a certain threshold, I'd like to get an updated report sent to me so I can go look at that immediately. Kind of cool stuff that's all criteria based on when we distribute the reports rather than on a regular scheduled basis. And the idea here is we'll show a little bit of this today, but what if you could do this in office tools you use every day? Instead of screen clipping static pictures of reports and putting them into PowerPoints. What if that live report that's interactive that people can work with and filter and uh, analyze could be embedded in a PowerPoint or a Word document and every time you open it, it gave you the current data. 
this is kind of cool stuff that's available to us here today. Another thing that's there is the ability to really make reporting accessible to the normal business user and not have to have a report developer tied to your hip. Being able to use things like natural language query to actually ask a question much like you would in a search engine and have it generate a report based upon the question or the phrase that you put in there is something that you can do today to get information and queried out of the system by just a, a regular business user, non-technical included. And then the really exciting stuff, and this is the heady stuff, is where things are going with artificial intelligence. So how is this going to apply to project management? Well, you know, what is project management for AI, uh, project management AI? Well, it's, it's a system that can perform day-to-day -day functions in projects without requiring human input. Um, it not only automates simple tasks, but can help you develop a key understanding of key project performance by doing analysis that would be hard for us to do ourselves with our own um, human mental capabilities. Uh, we use this to kind of uncover insights and provide more understanding into more complex tasks, make recommendations, help us make decisions, or definitely at least provide decision support, and do it in ways sometimes people just can't do very easily today. Ultimately, AI systems will save, save us time while improving outcomes for our projects and our teams. Just some of the things, uh, you know, up in Azure in the Microsoft Cloud, machine learning is here today. And it's really in its early stages, but it's doing a lot of cool things today. But uh, always coming is more complex algorithms in combination with machine learning, and machines will complement and enhance our efforts. We don't ever envision that it's going to take the place of what we're doing with our human creativity and our insights and our intuitions. But within the next five years, we could see computers undertaking the following project management functions. And I think about some of these things as uh, things that they can take off our plate so that we can provide more high value services as we go on through. Uh, helping us define the scope of a project based upon questions or criteria. Aligning with other business areas by allowing us to know where those synergies exist and providing opportunities or suggestions. By able to analyze risks and having us completely understand what the potential outcomes may be should those risks come to pass. Developing project schedules, timelines, and budgets based upon information that we have on hand at this time can help us develop those things and suggest ways that we can do that in an optimum fashion. Assigning tasks to the appropriate resources by looking at the resource availability, the skill sets that are required, and making suggestions on how we might optimize our resource pool in order to make that happen. Implementing software and other technical components that we need to deliver. Documenting project progress and doing that in a more automated fashion. And just analysis to assess project outcomes from very early on in the project life cycle are things that can help us move on through that right now can be either very manual uh, time-consuming, and in some case, tedious tasks for us to perform. And project management AI will evolve. Today, you know, its application is typically very narrow in their providing like assistance or, or little utilities that help us do things like determine whether things will be on time or whether or not they're going to, you know, have a variance that we need to address. So right now, today, you can automate certain tasks, you can provide some simple insights, and you can actually help communicate with the team by providing alerts and notifications and suggestions. But the second generation is quickly going to come, and this is where we're going to be expanding our project understanding to where we can start understanding the projects and the teams a little bit better and expand the ways that we analyze these things, including new metrics that we really weren't able to get to before because uh, the complexity of the way these things can be melded together and related can give us better insights into things like quality and performance, learning and getting better, uh, responding and understanding change, and thinking about uh, what this means from an effort perspective to us uh, as we move forward. And the exciting part is this third generation that they talk about, where it would actually fill in data gaps. You know, the, the whole concept of garbage in, garbage out still exists. And some folks, when they question AI, say, well, you know, the analysis that an AI will come up with is only as good as the data that's entered. Well, third generation AI, as they talk about it now, will actually help fill in the blanks based upon the available data that's there. And if it's incomplete or missing, uh, this generation will be able to assess what's missing and fill in the blanks and encourage better practice by encouraging teams to improve the quality of the data they're inputting by alerting us to the things that might be missing and what might be the proper values to put in there. And it can also, this is, I find this exciting, 
create new layers of metadata. So in order to understand better and do analysis that's more advanced than we can do with our uh, human comprehension, is to almost create on the fly different metadata pieces that aren't currently represented and then feed that metadata into the machine learning algorithms so it will enhance the ability of the AI to provide meaningful advice. All in all, just extending our capabilities as human project and portfolio managers and resource managers, it's an exciting time that I think is going to provide us the ability to really deliver on an effective basis on a more consistent basis. And then collaboration and mobility. Nothing can be done with solutions today unless collaboration and mobility are part of it. We live in a mobile world. We have a variety of devices uh, that we bring to the party. And be able to do things like report our time and our task status on a mobile device is something that's, pre, uh, that's, uh, that's a prerequisite. Um, there's apps available today for Project Online that allow you to do that. And with Power Apps from Microsoft, where you can actually build codeless apps, you can actually build your own to actually update and provide visibility into data that might not be in these apps already. The idea is it's accessible to non-developers in order to put those things in place from a business user perspective. And we can do this on any device with Android, Apple, you know, uh, PC, uh, Windows, whatever it might be. And all those devices are available to do these types of updates. So ultimately, next-gen project and portfolio management is really going to enable our businesses to operate with structure and agility and manage projects and initiatives of all sizes by connecting tools, processes, and people in a much more effective and streamlined fashion, driving business alignment, making sure we're working on the right things and providing ability so that we're responsive to the marketplace and to change, and then be able to accelerate our act actionable plans with intelligence and predictive analysis so that we can get to the end line more successfully and faster on a more consistent basis. So with that, I thought we'd go into some demonstration on some of these things in action. One of the things that we look at is, you know, once again, everything we're talking about here is today is based upon the Microsoft Cloud, and that one Microsoft message is really illustrated here. For example, notice that I'm in Office 365. Notice that project is part of the actual waffle here when we're looking at the actually uh, capabilities that are in here that we can go and, and access. But also we have the ability now to provide some intuitive tile-based interfaces that give us information as portals into this information. You know, ultimately we, we, we might get to a place where we get into the traditional views of project portfolios and such, but we could actually provide tiles that provide both analysis and navigation to different parts of the system, as well as communicate things to people that we want them to see about the organization and about our project organization as a whole. The idea is that the user experience can be tailored to an individual organization and even to different departments or different audiences within our organizations. So in this next gen homepage, to be able to drill into something like this very quickly and get to analysis and reporting that makes sense. We can actually come in and start looking at um, you know, the, the portfolio reports. We can do analysis based upon maybe who the project sponsors are and use those as filtering parameters to get different analysis on these types of things. Looking at a subset of these projects based upon who they are and even at look at different scenarios that we've done in our portfolio analysis that we want to go look at. The idea is to be able to do this analysis here in real time in an intuitive interface is something that uh, I think is uh, making this data more accessible and more flexible uh, for different user bases within the organization and don't require uh, heavy training and capabilities. To that end, the uh, the use of a portfolio management system and drilling in and using this as a hub of project information is where we traditionally have been. But now with more modern interface types of techniques, we can use things like more portfolio management that surfaces data that's made more readily updatable using things like SharePoint and other capabilities in there to take what's really housed in a robust project online database and bringing that data closer to the surface. Notice here I'm looking at a list of portfolios that have high-level portfolio metrics based upon the data that we want to keep in these particular views. And notice that we could go in here and look at, for example, a portfolio status report. And those of you that do native or uh, regular uh, narrative-based status reports, notice where we can come in here very quickly. And instead of drilling into different SharePoint sites within the Project Online database, we can actually come in and start updating these things right here in the surface in a spreadsheet-like fashion, and even change, if they're not formula-driven, change the status of that we want to uh, uh, 
uh, reflect in our status reporting as we go on through. And even be able to have just general portfolio data sheets that we want to update and be able to go in here on a more of a, a grid type basis and be able to provide all the updates that we want to provide and do that all right in here without having to drill into specific projects or other things that we want to go into. The idea is, is how do we make this easier, bring this stuff to the surface so that we can do updates but yet have a robust engine and uh, database repository on the back end. From an integration perspective, like we talked about with the connectivity of tools that, we, that we'd like to have, let's go talk about that possibility. Uh, many of you that are on the line today may be using Project Online or Microsoft Project today. And in our project center that we looked at, uh, we might have different projects that we want to access. And the traditional way to do that natively in Project Online is to select a project and then say, I want to open it up in either Microsoft Project or in the browser version, PWA, for editing or viewing. Well, with Microsoft's Project Connect, the interoperability with other solutions is now here on a seamless basis. For example, if I have a project here, but I want it's a simple project that I want to use, maybe a Kanban style, simple task planning tool like Office 365 Planner, I could choose to use Office 365 Planner as my planning tool for this particular project. I can select that project, I can open up Office 365 Planner, and here is where I can actually then go in and assign tasks to my team update those on a more Kanban style basis, drag them through their different stages of completion as we go through. And the idea is that we can update these things very quickly and use this as the planning tool and have this information automatically feed back into the portfolio details back in Project Online. If we go back here into the Project Center, the same thing would hold true for Agile tools. If you're using Visual Studio TFS or Visual Studio Team Services VSTS today, you could actually have a project in this portfolio in Project Online where we're really doing the detailed tactical work in Visual Studio. As I click on Visual Studio and open that up here, it will actually take me to the backlog where I can actually look at the epics, features, user stories, and tasks that are in here and be able to actually plan out iterations or sprints and then have our teams manage these things across a story or a task board like we typically would do in these tools, but have the updates actually feed back to Project Online as we go on through. So basically have them tied together so all the tactical details are done here, but the relevant information is being fed back to our portfolio in the Project Center. Same thing would hold true with tools like JIRA. You know, a very popular tool for issue and some agile management organizations. We could do that same use case that we're using in Visual Studio Team Services and open these things up in JIRA and be able to manage those things across our stories and our task boards and our iterations in here as well. Now, we're excited about Microsoft Teams. Um, we are using it extensively internally. And essentially what that does is it allows us from the uh, Office 360 platform to create different teams or groups. Notice that you can actually provision a team for say individual projects or for a team etc. And notice here in the central social networking integration that I can come in here and I can have conversations within this team. I can have file storage. I can actually look at um, um, uh, you know, different files that we, uh, we share or documents that we have together that we want to work on. We can look at um, individual schedules. So for here, I could actually look at a Microsoft Project Online schedule that we could actually look at in here. Or we could look at uh, Online Planner with Office 365 Planner. We can have uh, uh, OneNote notebooks in here that we can keep meeting notes and other um, information and wikis that we have here associated to those types of things. And we can really have different applications and sources that actually give us the ability as a team to look at whatever tools or dimensions of information we need for that particular team. When I opened up that Fabricam project earlier on, remember I had the uh, Visual Studio Team Services uh, uh, backlog. What if I went into that backlog and wanted to look at the Epic board and drill down into that and basically use that from within here? This is Visual Studio Team Services that we're actually working with right here in this interface, right within Teams. It brings everything together that we can work with in a, in a very seamless fashion. So we're excited about that. Uh, the ability to have conversations and chats and other things in here, um, once again, uh, this is going to eventually replace the Skype capabilities in Microsoft and having one forum where a team can collaborate on all dimensions of project data and uh, other information and collaborative data is very exciting. And then the other piece about the cloud that's very exciting is the ability to use data visualization in Power BI. You know, if we want to look at, uh, uh, for example, the ability to 
you know, go in and have a native data feed or an O data feed from uh, Project Online directly to Power BI, you can start having combined dashboards, for example, in here. Like, notice I've got some traditional portfolio management type of metrics and bubble charts and KPIs here. But notice I've also got some agile metrics on things like burn ups and burn downs, uh, bug trends cumulative flow diagrams to kind of talk about where we're going with scope, et cetera. The idea is we can start building rich data sets that are accommodating the needs for different methodologies that we're actually working on uh, in here. Uh, the idea there is, is that any of this can be fashioned with different report packs are available and can be modified very easily without being a report developer in order to provide the information you want from a dashboard and information perspective. And then just the analysis piece that you would like to work with. Let's just say I went and looked at a whole new set of reporting capabilities and going into Power BI and be able to provide a picture to organizations in a very sophisticated and meaningful fashion. Be able to look at things like financial pictures and summaries and be able to present them in a, in a meaningful way that makes sense to our organization. To be able to uh, go into a portfolio view and look at a portfolio dashboard and look at how we're doing from a color-coded KPI perspective and be able to go into here and drill in and filter in on different types or classifications of projects very quickly. Well, what I like is the ability to go into any one of these projects and drill through and look at, for example, individual data status reports on a particular project or look at the project financials for this particular project, all drilling through or the risks from a particular project, for example, all based on what we access from that initial portfolio board. Okay, And then the resource reporting being able to aggregate all the app, uh, capacity planning and all the tactical resource assignments that we're doing and look at how we're doing from a resource perspective and looking at this from a variety of different perspectives, look at the different time frames, looking at maybe different individual projects if we want to filter through that, looking at information where we're forecasting resources by project or by resource by month or look at forecast utilization or you know resource forecast heat map on where we're using or maybe we want to do utilization type of reports these are things that all become natural outputs just by updating our data because the tie-in with power bi is native and automated and then just being able to customize reporting so that we can give uh, targeted information here's an example of a uh, a cover uh, for a report portfolio report set that ultimately can then have tailored formatting so a lot of folks have PowerPoints where they have different sections or, or zones within the PowerPoint that have different levels of dimensions of project data. What if we had this already pre-formatted so that the reporting that you get really truly does become a natural output to the process as we go on through? And part of the stuff that I'm excited about is the ability to do this stuff in a variety of different fashions for distribution. You know, we can already uh, put these things out into uh, uh, different formats, PDFs, put them out to PowerPoint, static PowerPoint slides based upon the reports that are in here. But I like the idea that we can actually go into PowerPoint and notice here I have a PowerPoint slide where I have a resource report that's actually embedded into the PowerPoint slide. And notice that the tabs are all interactive. So go to different dimensions. I can use different filters in here. It's a live report, and every time the audience who gets this PowerPoint is, who wants to uh, open this and refresh the data, they're going to get the current data here all the time without us having to uh, re-represent that data. Ideally, we could point people to these live reports and dashboards, but some folks still want to have reports pushed to them. And the idea is I could focus this down, and I can do something like, say, just show me the business analyst role, and I can start looking at live filtering of this data as I go on through. The other piece that we really think is cool is this natural language query I talked about in the slides. To be able to go and ask a question and say something like, show um, average, and notice, oh, excuse me, my typing is atrocious. Average, notice it's giving me some helps like a search engine would. And I'll say work variance by, and I'll do project name. And look what it did. It basically created a report. Didn't call up one. It built one based upon what I typed in here. And I can actually change formats by just simply putting a delineator and say, make it a pie chart. 
Or what if I just wanted to make it a list or a data dump so I could get the data points out of here? Now I've done this on my own as a business user without having to get a report developer involved. And then I can actually pin this to one of those multi uh, tile dashboards that I have access to and just add this as a report tile in a dashboard that we have in here. Things that are very exciting as we go on through. So I guess what I would say uh, to wrap up in, in some of this stuff is that you know there's a bright future for where we're going with this cloud computing but so much of it is here today. Uh, everything I've shown you here today from a demo perspective can be enabled within your organizations as we speak. And then some of the more advanced things as far as the AI and some additional capabilities, those are rapidly coming as we get into the mix. So just to, in closing, uh, Wickersoft can support you as a triple gold certified Microsoft partner. Uh, we have a footprint all over the U.S., and we have consultants with lots of experience in deploying these technologies and making them effective for your organization. We focus on project and portfolio management, so we do a lot in the project and project online platform, but we also support the Dynamics platform if people have professional services automation and CRM needs. The Scaled Agile, we showed you some of the Visual Studio tie-ins to, tie today. We can help pull that into the mix for you, as well as just help you with uh, getting more effective use of SharePoint for enterprise work management within your organization. And ultimately, all these things will tie natively to Power BI and some of the uh, analytics that we showed here today. If you're interested in what you saw here today, I know we gave some very generalized uh, talk and generalized demonstration of capabilities, but we will offer free assessment and roadmap of what it would take to get you to some of these technologies based upon your desires and your requirements. And we can even help chaperone you with a, setting you up with a free project online trial, and we can help you by supporting you through that trial and setting it up in a way that's meaningful for your organization and uh, work through that with you. Or if you just want a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo that takes this to another level that's more applicable to the way you do business, we're happy to set that up as well. Um, with that, um, you, there's also other webinar recordings that are out there at us.wickersoft.com webinars, uh, a history of ones that we have, have recorded and a list of ones you could register that are upcoming. Uh, you can also reach out to us at nasales at 